Thank you so much for the uh, opportunity. I want to talk about environmental imprint on the gas phase metallicity of galaxies at redshift of 1.4 to 2.6. This is a work in collaboration with the MASSEF group and uh, uh, I almost finished uh, the writing part and now I'm implementing the comments for this work. This is outline of my talk. I will start with local environment measurements in Kansas and then I will introduce uh, a little bit massive survey and then sample selection. And then I will talk about the average mass mentality relation at diverse environments. And at the end, I will uh, give you some physical interpretation of the results. Uh, uh, in, uh, in this February, we published a paper for, uh, in the collaboration with Candles. thank you all uh, for helping me out uh, for this paper published a paper for density measurements of uh, uh, Candace galaxies in the all five fields. Uh, we used um, a new version of photometric redshifts, redshift PDFs, and uh, thanks to very accurate and well calibrated redshift PDFs, we treated all the galaxies in a probabilistic way. We uh, considered that galaxies in the redshift space are somehow extended, and we find the weight of each galaxy to be in each redshift slice and then we assign uh, some weights to galaxies. And in this weight space, in the 2D space, for each redshift slice, we use kernel density estimation, or actually weighted kernel density estimation to get density maps for each redshift slice. And at the end, when we want to assign a density for each galaxy, we sum up all of the uh, densities coming from different redshift slices based on their probabilities. Uh, in, uh, in the kernel density estimation, we used one Mises kernel function. Uh, actually, for the directional data, when our data is in 2D sphere in RA and DEC space, the most appropriate uh, kernel function is one Mises. But in the literature, most of the previous works use uh, Gaussian function. Although this is not a problem for candles fields because they are very small. But in that paper, we tried to introduce a very, very more generalized method that can be applied in a wide area uh, surveys like, for example, Hawaii 2.0 or even SDSS. Uh, one of the important hyperparameters in kernel density estimation is bandwidth. Uh, in most of the studies, uh, people uh, use some arbitrary value for bandwidth, but we use a very well-known uh, method, likelihood cross-validation, to find the optimum bandwidth for our uh, density maps. Uh, other than their tec the technical parts, we assign the local density uh, measurement for uh, each galaxy. The local density contrast for each galaxy density contrast is uh, the density enhancement compared to the background for each galaxy. And also I want to mention that we also did boundary correction because uh, due to very small area of candles, uh, almost, for example, for this bandwidth, 40% of our, our galaxies uh, are affected by the boundary, uh, boundary uh, underestimation. So to do this, we normalize our densities by the area of the, uh, area of the um, actually kernel function, which is not included in, which is not covered in the candles. And this uh, animation here shows, which is published in the paper for all the fields, this is only for good south, shows uh, density maps in different redshifts from 0.4 to uh, out to redshift of five. And the red region, and it's color coded with density contrast. And as you go to redder, uh, we are having over densities and blue region shows uh, actually under densities or field region. Having these uh, densities, what we did, we use uh, MOSDEF data, which is, uh, as you know, this is an extensive uh, near IR spectroscopy in the candles fields. Uh, it includes about 1500 galaxies, which are selected from the H-band uh, photomet photometric catalog of 3DHST. And their sample is uh, complete uh, down to 10 to the 9.5 solar masses. The sample uh, includes uh, uh, actually the different air, different fields of the candles, but mostly focused on EGS, Cosmos, and Good Norse. Uh, we uh, 
we took a subsample of galaxies from MASTE, we cross matched them with our local uh, environment measurements with the radius of 0.2 arc second. 0.2 arc second is FWHM of H band PSF, which is uh, the number we can use to match these two cat catalogs because the sources in the MASTE were selected based on 3 DHSD, but our sample is from Candles, different data reductions, so uh, we should cross match them and uh, to get the idea of galaxies in, uh, in the candles field. And then we put a constraint on significant detection of H alpha. So they are H alpha emitters somehow so with signal to noise greater than three. By definition, th those galaxies should be uh, star forming because we find a strong emission line in H alpha, but we uh, checked again by uh, putting them in a UVJ uh, rest frame color and see that if they are uh, actually a star forming galaxies. If they reside in a, a quiescent region, we uh, excluded them. And also we excluded aging galaxies based on X-ray emission and IRAC colors uh, because uh, they will be a problematic for our measurements in the metallicity, we exclude AGNs. And also we put a constraint in, for N2 ratio uh, which is the uh, right, uh, right, right part of the PPT diagram, very obvious uh, AGM parts with putting this con constraint for N2 over H alpha line. And our sample is also mass complete. It means that we put a constraint uh, to SLR masses. This figure here shows uh, photometric redshifts, the comparison of photometric redshift in the candles and a spectroscopic redshift for most of sources. For the sources, uh, we selected based on these criteria here. As you can see, this is uh, not the best in uh, Dirichlet's catalog. This is just photometric redshift because uh, when uh, I measure the density, density maps, I use redshift PDF, photometric redshift, not com combination of uh, photometric and uh, spectroscopy, because in that case, we will get some biases toward uh, galaxies with a spectroscopic redshift. So if we, if we put Z best here, we will get a very better relation. But with photometric redshift, which is the statistical uh, average redshift PDF, we can see that there is almost a tight correlation with sigma NMD of 0 0.03. And then I divided the sample in two redshift bins, redshift from 1.37 to 1 1.7, uh, which includes 167 galaxies and which is shown in a green area. And the red area here shaded region shows um, galaxies in this redshift range from 2.09 to 2.61 with 303 galaxies. And I also excluded outliers in the sample. For example, these galaxies uh, with very uh, large offset in their redshift and on-field circles shows galaxies that are excluded from the sample and the field circle shows the sample I used in this study, and these numbers are just for field uh, circles. And then I uh, compared their local environment uh, of this sample based on our catalog. I, we know that MOSSEF covers almost 60% of candles at redshift 1.5 and 30% at 2.3. Uh, and this Actually, this wide aerial coverage uh, translates to diverse environment in our sample. This is a very extensive program, so we can probe different environments if we use uh, this large spectroscopic sample. This figure here shows uh, the histogram of density contrast one plus delta, which is uh, the ratio of uh, density, uh, local density over average uh, local density log of that. Uh, and uh, orange uh, curve shows this distribution for, for all star forming candles galaxies. Uh, for the star forming, I use UVJ color to um, get the star forming galaxies and put a constraint on SLR masses. And also the green uh, curve shows uh, the distribution for the sample we use in this work. We can see that uh, they are, uh, there is very good, uh, they are very similar uh, to each other, it means that we 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 have over densities, under densities, and intermediate density in our sample. And also here, I'm showing an example of density map for the cosmos field at a specific redshift 2.13, uh, 
And this uh, on-field stars here shows massive uh, sources at this redshift, the specific redshift, and also this on-field uh, uh, circles shows a spectroscopically confirmed subcomponents of a porta cluster at the redshift of 2.1 with the work of Yuan 2014, we can see that our density maps uh, can uh, predict these over densities correctly and this reassures us that over densities are, are correct. We also checked uh, some X-ray sources, uh, for example, in the uh, EGS field, I, no, no, in the UDS field, we have some X-ray sources and we, we see that uh, there is over densities in the X, extended X-ray regions. It, it uh, assures us that there is somehow over densities. We realize over densities if we see um, uh, um, X-ray sources, but this is rare at high redshift. Uh, and then we, being our data in different environments, we uh, actually, based on this, uh, orange curve, we find uh, tertiates for our sample to split our sample to three environment beans. And then we label them with field intermediate density and overdense, which the first tertile is for field galaxies, second tertile is for intermediate density, and overdense is the last tertile. And for the redshift of 1.5, for each uh, actually environment for each tertile, we have about 55 galaxies uh, with uh, th those criteria. And also for the redshift of 2.3, we have almost 100 galaxies in each bin of uh, environment, which comes from this. Um, here, if we put, if we find tertiles based on this uh, actually green curve, we should have exactly the same numbers in each bin but we are putting constraint based on all candles field to uh, reduce the, the biases coming from uh, the distribution of our sample. Although they are very similar, but we put the constraint based on this orange curve. And then uh, we uh, plot average mass metallicity relation uh, at different environments. We know that uh, um, for a lot of galaxies, uh, in the, especially in the low mass end of mass metallicity relation, uh, we have um, non-detections in the N2, so we cannot get metallicity for those galaxies. We can, we, uh, we, uh, can only uh, find the upper limits for metallicity. To take into account the contribution of all galaxies, we use uh, a stacking technique. We stack uh, our uh, spectra, 1D spectra, in different beams of stellar masses. Here, uh, I've been, the, I've been, been uh, the galaxies in different environments in three beans of stellar masses in a way that in each bean we have the same number of uh, galaxies uh, in each environment. For example, for the blue one, you can see uh, these uh, data points here, the diamond uh, uh, shape shows the stacked spectra and the data points here shows the individual galaxies. Here, I'm not showing the, actually the uh, error bars in the SLR mass, but error bar in metallicities are very low, smaller than uh, the, size of, uh, the, the, the size of the symbol. Uh, as you can see here, all the data points here, the blue data points, uh, lie down the, uh, this red data points here, but for the redshift of 1.5, but as we go to the redshift of 2.3, uh, this trend switches and uh, the, uh, these red data points are below the uh, blue data points, which are for field galaxies. So blue is for field and red is for over density. And also to get the average mass metals relation, I uh, actually find this, I uh, fit a line and this is base parameters here to just quantify that how we can um, find average mass metallicity relation at different environments. So the result here is somehow a 0.1 dex uh, decrease in uh, field, 0.1 dex metallicity enhancement for over densities at this redshift, but here 0.1 dex metal deficiency for uh, over dense regions. But uh, a possible uh, bias in this work is, in, in those plots is, somehow our SLR mass, underlying SLR mass distributions are very important. For example, here, 
I'm showing a stellar mass distribution of galaxies in two different redshift beams in three different environments. Red is for uh, overdense, intermediate, and field, blue for field. As you can see here, for example, if I want to get uh, from 9.5 to 10, if I want to get average metallicity of galaxies, you can see that galaxies in over densities tends to have higher uh, stellar masses, even, even in the same uh, stellar mass uh, beam. So if I get the metallicity for these galaxies, I will get higher metallicity. But this, is, this comes from purely from a stellar mass uh, distribution of the galaxies. And for example, for field galaxies, which, which peaks here, I will get lower metallicity. Although the, the average of mass is the same, but underlying distribution is important. To take into account for that one, for a stellar mass distribution, we, we try to exactly uh, very, very precisely match the stellar mass distribution of galaxies. Uh, for do this, uh, for example, this shaded region shows the uh, stellar mass distribution match galaxies, mass match galaxies. For do this, I need to uh, throw away some of the galaxies to uh, get exact, this exact same distribution in different environments. But for example, here, uh, I should randomly choose for example, three galaxies here from field, from uh, over dense, and from intermediate in this spin, and so on. But each time I should uh, throw away some of the galaxies. But to take into account the contribution of all galaxies, I use bootstrap technique. For bootstrap technique, I, re I repeat this sample, uh, actually resampling and measuring the stacked spectra for 5,000 times. And in each time we measure values, and at the end, when we want to get composite spectra, the stacked spectra, we look at the average value and standard deviation of that uh, bootstrap sample. And here, intentionally, we are increasing uh, actually a statistical error of our data because we are dealing with lower, uh, lower sample, with a smaller sample size in each trial. But at the end, it will give us uh, a very conservative errors and meaningful uh, uh, result. Here is the composite spectra for mass selected sample. Here you can see that uh, uh, this, the, the, the colors are the same, field, intermediate, and uh, uh, overdense. And this is for redshift of 1.5 and redshift of 2.3. and uh, I normalized uh, these lines to LH alpha. So area underneath the, for example, N2 line here, somehow shows the metallicity with some conversion. So as you can see here, by looking at the just stacked spectra, we can see that as we go to denser environment, although the stellar mass distribution is exactly the same for uh, this resampling, we get uh, higher metallicity and that's the same here. But if you look at this one, you can see that it gets weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker here. So we um, actually fit a, a triple Gaussian function for these three lines. And then we get uh, the amplitude of this Gaussian function here to get metallicity. And this figure shows the metallicity of um, different uh, environments mass metallicity as a, at the redshift of 1.5, coming from N2 ratio uh, from Petini uh, uh, calibration. As you can see here, all the data points, all the red data points or green data points are uh, lie above uh, this blue data points coming from field. And here I'm showing the Zahid 2014 trend, which is uh, for the, actually for, uh, a different sample, but at the same redshift, uh, and it's not environmental selected. And then in this figure, I'm showing the difference of uh, metallicity in overdense and field. It shows somehow offset of uh, metallicity in overdensity compared to uh, from uh, field galaxies as a function of stellar mass. The dark blue data points here shows our data coming from the difference of these data points. I uh, take into account both errors in uh, overdense and error in um, 
field or under lens region. And one of the, and this light data points here shows uh, the galaxies in um, from previous works. One of the recent works from Meyer 2019 uh, did a, a did a study in redshift of 1.5 for a porta cluster and showed that showed the same the same uh, this uh, actually a squares here the, the the same enhancement in the core of a cluster a spectroscopy confirmed cluster but other works for example Tran and Nominiki find uh, no significant trends but for example for Nominiki 2019 the actually the potential explanation for this discrepancy is from our results and their results is actually they compared their mass metallicity relation in uh, over density with mass metallicity relation from a literature, for example, mass metallicity relation from other works from ESTA 2013. And it can introduce some biases because sample selection and all the data reduction processes are important when we get uh, metallicity. And for the redshift of 2.3, if we plot uh, the same uh, coming from a stack the spectra, if we plot uh, data points, we can see that there is a significant metal deficiency at the higher redshift 2.3. And uh, we, again, we plot it in uh, and compare it with previous works. One of the works uh, with uh, Valentino 2015 at the redshift of two, got the, exactly the same trend, a very significant metal deficiency with four sigma at in overdense regions in a porta cluster. But there is other works, for example, from Kulas or Shimakao 2015, they got exactly the opposite trend with uh, higher metallicity in overdensities. Uh, so it's still uh, there is ongoing debate in the literature about these trends, but for example, in two works I showed here for Kulas and Shimakawa, I tried to explain the possible, the possible uh, way that uh, we can say uh, what, what could be the problem when we get this enhancement in their uh, results, but not in ours. For example, this is the figure from uh, Shimakawa 2015, and their sample for over densities are narrow band selected sample, H alpha emitter narrow band selected sample. But for the field sample, they used different study from ERP 2006, which is UV selected. And a lot of works, including the work from STAT 2013, uh, showed that uh, different cr selection criteria, for example, narrow band selected galaxies in the lower SLR mass has, uh, have higher metallicities compared to UV selected because they are in the different stage of uh, galaxy evolution. So this, uh, this uh, enhancement could be uh, due to the uh, sample selection. And the other thing, as, we, as I mentioned in previous slides, is unbalanced SLR mass distributions. For example, these two plots are from the work of Kulas 2013. Uh, we know that uh, the, the, the sample size in the high redshift is not that, that much large. So for example, here, the red data points are their uh, protocluster sample, and uh, 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 actually black data points are for field sample. And as you can see here, for example, in the low mass end, where they find uh, enhancement, there is a very uh, small number of field galaxies. So actually in the beginning, they are only comparing these few galaxies in the uh, actually very massive end of this beam compared to other galaxies which are uh, well distributed all over the uh, SLR mass beam. So uh, to make a very reliable conclusion, we should do uh, mass matching between these two samples and then redo the uh, actually the study and maybe we will get larger error bars and we cannot say that the enhancement is significant. But these are all uh, speculations and uh, and to uh, explain why we get different results. For, uh, for the physical interpretation of our results, uh, we found that at higher redshift, the metallicity of overdensities, galaxies and overdensities are lower than the field, field galaxies, but this is not the case at the redshift of 1.5 as we go to lower redshift. 
The possible explanation is that we know that uh, uh, denser gas uh, has actually a smaller cooling time, it can cool down efficiently. So uh, th that's the reason that in the early universe, where the universe uh, was very dense by the factor of one plus C cubed, uh, the cooling uh, was very efficient. But as we go to high redshift, gas cannot cool down efficiently. And then we have lower star formation rate, average star globally, globally average star formation rate in galaxies. And but so uh, we, in the over densities at high redshift, at redshift, for example, to, uh, uh, for example, three or higher, we had uh, a lot of uh, cold gas. The, the, the denser region can cool down faster, so that cool, that cold gas can accrete into the center of a galaxy, can and can di dilute the metal content of a galaxy, and as a result, we will have lower metallicity in denser regions. Uh, the, the same shown here from the Dekel's work, 2006, shows that the cold streams are possible at high redshift, but this is not the case at low redshift when we go to low redshift. And also at the high redshift, where we have denser gas, we, ha we have uh, more cold gas accretion. They showed that in one of the simulations, that cold gas accretions comes from cosmic waves where the gas is denser and goes to the center of uh, 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 actually halo to uh, feed galaxies and increase the star formation rate and also dilute the metallicity. But as we go to low redshift, the, the, uh, the gas around the, uh, in the halo is shock heated and it cannot cool down efficiently. And as a result, we have a suppression of uh, actually gas accretion. And as a result of suppression of gas accretion, it tries to, it, uh, the um, actually metallicity of galaxies uh, goes higher. And the other problem is at the redshift of two, the outflows are more prominent. And as a result, uh, the massive halos can keep their metallicities in a potential well. And uh, when gas, the main outflows goes, the, goes into the IGM, they recycle into the galaxy itself or, or they uh, accrete to nearby galaxies in a denser region. This is one of the uh, results from the simulation, uh, illustrious simulation, and also shows that the, uh, the gas accreted to the, uh, to, uh, the galaxies in over densities are pre-processed and more metal rich compared to field galaxies. But this is only a case for the lower redshifts, lower than uh, actually two, and it's significant around 1.5, not in the higher redshifts. Thank you so much. Any questions? This is great. Thank you so much, Neema. Uh, there's one question from Harry in the chat, so we can oh. do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just more of a comment, but um, the um, so you try to take into account the different mass distributions with each bin, and it occurred to me that another way to do that might be to just lightweight your stellar masses and plot the horizontal points at the lightweighted mean stellar mass. Since you're taking a lightweighted metallicity anyway, that would seem to be a way to take out the bias oh, you mean, the resample. Oh, you mean that in the metallicity measurements? When you're doing it, yeah, when you do it, the next plot down. And, um, in this one? Okay. Yeah, um, right. So you're trying to mass match your sample. Yeah. And I'm just saying if you move your points horizontally to the light weighted mean mass, then okay. you don't have to do the resampling and you're basically doing the same thing for your mass that you're doing for your metallicity measurement since you're stacking your spectra. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that suggestion. Um, another th uh, question. Um, so you're, since you're doing terciles and density, the, the over densities are actually different in your two red sift slices. Are they, are they a lot different or are they pretty yeah. similar? Actually, for example, the, in this one, the criteria is 1.69, and in that one is 1.77. This is the criteria, the numbers I put for density contrast. Okay. They are pretty similar, uh, given yeah. that 
Yeah, given the errors in density contrast, they are almost the same. Yeah. yeah. Are there any other questions? If so, please feel free to ask them directly or write them in the chat. So yeah, I, I, go on. I raised my hand in Zoom. I don't know if you oh, want us to do that. I didn't see that. That's okay. I'll just speak up. So Nima thinks this really nice talk. It's a beautiful data set and a really nice analysis. I wanted to sort of expand on Harry's point, because when you got to this point, justifying the mask match samples as being necessary, yeah. I didn't feel that they're necessary. I think they're great. So that's a really careful, conservative way to check for this. And I think it's a good analysis to include. But you really only need to make sure that you're not letting a different distribution of stellar mass affect your measurement of mass metallicity relationship. Yeah, that, that's correct. And so there's this intermediate level, like Harry was suggesting, where you might shift points or simply just plot and check if the curves are different okay. rather than comparing an average metallicity. And so maybe that's just a way to present the analysis slightly differently. Oh, you mean that just looking at this or? Right. Yeah, you're not talking about an average metallicity. Anytime you reduce this to an average metallicity, then you have to worry about the mass distributions being different. Yeah, exactly. But you already have analysis here where you don't have to. Yeah, that's right. When, yeah, that, that's a problem when you get the average metallicity. Yeah, but uh, most of the works use that average metallicity to get their trends. And some of the reason that I included that uh, the solar mass, uh, matching the solar mass distributions is just for example, to say that why different uh, works, for example, like the work with Kulas, got different results, very significantly different results. And there's a discrepancy, for example, with the work of, for example, Valentium. They got 0.25 decks lower metallicity, but uh, Shimaka or Kulas got 0.1 decks higher metallicity. And this discrepancy is a lot and there's that's on the board, yeah. Yeah, I noticed that part of the talk and I thought it would be really nice to go back through if you can get their data and sort of do the more careful apples to apples comparison. That was a nice idea. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? So Wage and I had the same comment, but I would, I'll just add, no one would have believed you had you not just mass matched everything and then done the, the analysis really conservatively. So well done. Um, and then, um, uh, are, and, and I apologize if I missed this, but are the density maps available for us? Yeah, yeah, this or, is uh, not yet. Yeah, this is published in the paper in this okay. library, yeah, as a part in collaboration in the candles, and we used uh, that, that density maps. And we just cross match most of galaxies with those density maps we published previously. Okay. Okay. And we enjoyed your talk very much. We were commenting that you deliver the talk very well. We're watching a lot of online talks, and uh, the way you speak is quite nice, you know, it's easy to understand. So, well, thank you so much. Thank you. That's, that's my training. I train him how to speak. Um, I'm like Trump. I get credit for everything. Well done. I'll vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's too soon for the Trump jokes, Bahram. <laughs> uh, last call for questions. Are there any other but these, these the density maps are fairly careful, carefully done, and I encourage you all uh, in Candle's team to, to use them if you need to look at the environmental dependence or anything like that. And that's up to Redshift 3. Is that correct, Nima? You know, we, we have done this up to Redshift 5, but after this, we cannot get a very good sample size, mass complete sample, and we cannot do any significant study uh, after that Redshift. So actually, Nima, what are you doing next? What what is on your plate? Oh, uh, after this, after this, I'm uh, I have done uh, some of the works with uh, semi-analytical data. The data uh, I got from Rachel, 
and I uh, repeat the analysis uh, for the semantical data and I get the density densities in there, uh, actually in the SAM and I compared with the observational results and there is somehow good agreement. But in the lower mass, uh, I got some uh, discrepancies for environmental uh, quenching efficiency. It can, uh, I'm working on that to uh, compare these to the simulation and actually uh, the observation. What we get from a star formation rate, the environmental dependency of a star formation rate activity and environment, uh, actually at high, at outreach of street. Perhaps a boring question, but relevant to this working group. Um, so your comparison to the spectroscopic redshifts shows what looks like a pretty big bias of the photometric redshifts at redshifts two to two and a half or something. Yeah. It, do you have a theory for what's going on there? Yeah, here for the, for the photometric redshift based on uh, the draft of the uh, paper, from Britain, uh, I used uh, the statistical average of redshift PDF. Probably we can look at the peak of redshift PDF to see that if still we have this discrepancy at the higher redshift, this offset. Which, which statistical average? Did you use one of theirs or you took the PDF yourself and did an average? No, no they, they included this uh, average probability, uh, the, the photometric redshift in their catalog. Yeah, so right, they had a couple different ones, right? Yeah, I, I'm using the statistical average one. Actually, okay. they call it with uh, Z weight. Okay, yeah. Peak. We can look right. at Right, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if that one is similarly biased. Yep. Uh, Nima, can you go back to your science, uh, like the physical origins slide? Oh. Yeah, that one. So, in in addition to the uh, the sort of environmental analysis that you're doing, is there any other uh, observable that you have in mind for looking at uh, sort of the this cold streams as a function of redshift? Oh. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of studies to uh, actually to uh, observe the cold gas accretion, but we know that uh, probably the people use a star formation rate as a proxy for gas accretion. And they right. say that the gas accretion, uh, actually a star formation rate should follow gas accretion rate. Mm -hmm. And in different works, they showed that the gas accretion history traces a star formation rate or vice versa. And I don't know if we can directly observe them, but that's very good to uh, actually observe directly gas accretion in different, or environment or not environmental selected for the general galaxies. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, no, another take on the, I don't know about the physics, but just on the correlations, of course, there's the, the claim that, that the, um, that it's a manifold of mass metallicity and star formation rate or surface density, right? Yeah. And so it seems like in principle, you might have the data to see whether you actually are falling on the same manifold as opposed to just on the mass metallicity. Yeah, but that's a very good point because all of these trends can be due to a star formation rate uh, of the galaxies in different environments. That is one of the possibilities it cannot be only due to actually uh, gas accretion because for metals, for metals, we have two components. One of them is gas accretion and a star formation rate. And uh, for, for doing this, uh, I should, uh, and I can also put a constraint in the H beta, H beta detection of galaxies to get their star formation rate uh, with uh, corrected from Balmer decrement and then look at their uh, star formation rates to see that if this is the effect of gas accretion or comes from only a star formation rate. Right, yeah. But the reason that I uh, didn't do that in this study is it dramatically decreased my sample size if I put a constraint on H beta. <laughs> yeah, so you could, you could do it just using star formation rates without that and just 
just to see, but yes, you're right. Yeah. Nima, crazy question, but do you have an example? Did you like get lucky and find maybe a very interesting like group slash cluster area in candles, preferably in Good South that maybe we can hit with web? Oh, for example, uh, or that you're getting yourself we won't steal in, from you. in the good south. Uh, this is actually the density density uh, evolution from point four to yeah. Oh, you can play it. Oh, cool. Yeah. I didn't quite see that. Yeah, this is from point four uh, out to redshift of five. For example. Let's go one up. Oh, nice. For example, yeah, one of yeah. the nice regions here. And I also, also I compared these density maps with the work of Fossetti 2017. Uh -huh. And we, we have a lot of overlaps, but they, uh, they did it with 3 dhst Right. Yeah, we are doing it with candles. Let's talk more because we're here writing this uh, a proposal where we're going to do kind of mini IFUs with the MSA. Oh, that's I appreciate cool. array with the grids and we might, you know, this might be a nice field. Yeah. Nice that's way of finding it. Good. Yeah. That's good. Do the candles and the 3 dhst environment estimates match well or is uh, there uh, any extra benefit from like the photos APDFs that you have here? Oh, uh, actually, for uh, for the galaxies that they don't have uh, Grisom spectra, mm -hmm. they uh, use a nearby galaxy to assign a spectroscopic redshift for those galaxies. And it can introduce a lot of biases in their work because for some of the galaxies uh, which they don't have uh, a spectroscopic or Grisom redshift or a spectroscopic redshift, they assign a spectroscopic redshift uh, using a nearby galaxy. And uh, we, we see that uh, in the density maps, overall, the over densities are the same, mm -hmm. but they, they don't have this much resolution in the redshift. And also the other uh, problem is uh, our density contrast values are not matched well as uh, the absolute value, but over densities are still over densities on their map. I see. So, yeah, for example, we, we can see that this is over density in their map, but for example, instead of five, it could be, for example, six or seven based on their uh, definition. Right, right. All right, thank you. And then, um, this is Anton Kukumu. Um, nice presentation and good results. Uh, I like it. Um, following up a bit on the over densities in Good South, um, yes, I think there are um, a few interesting over densities, even from before 3 d HST. The, uh, ESO spectroscopy showed that there were a few kind of in the range, let's say relative half to one. Um, so definitely I think what you've got there would look like one of them. The question is, do you have any good sort of high mass over densities in good south, let's say a of three to four? Because um, that would that would be very nice to see. I'd, we could certainly talk more about that with Susan if, if there's... Uh... Yeah, I should look into this. I haven't looked at uh, the actually stellar mass distribution of galaxies and over densities, but that's a good to uh, identify these over densities and just look at the position of galaxies because for most of them, we have Grisom spectroscopy. And for 12% of the for twelve percent of the galaxy, we have a spectroscopy galaxy. Yeah. So we can definitely go for uh, spectroscopy and confirmation of these over densities. Because to me, I think that'd be nice. I mean, then you'd be probing really proto clusters of sort of future uh, big overdenses. So that would be a very nice science case. Or if you have, if they, if you have, if we get lucky, or if you're able to finagle it so that there's two overdensities in one MSA field of view, because even at lower redshift, there's a lot you can do with web um, in terms of stellar kinematics and wind. Oh, okay, yeah. Could could I have the movie? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You could also try embedding the movie in a paper. I, I recently saw like one of Tom Peterkin's uh, papers had like a, an evolution movie that was embedded into the PDF. Yeah, they, but in the electronic version, they uh, published, AppJ published a movie in the electronic version, but it's not in the PDF, I think. Right, right. Nima, are these available for people to download? Yeah, yeah, this is 
yeah, this is published uh, along with the paper. Uh, Nima, if you can if, share the link for that, I can also add it to like the, the candles, like list of like the one-stop shop that we currently have. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The link of the paper or? Uh, whichever you prefer, like whatever the, the, what's just, the, just whatever. the link to the, to the over densities. So, so that people won't have to look, look for the paper. All right, so thank you everyone for the questions and thank you Nima for this wonderful talk. Thank you. For it was really nice. Yes.